and delighted to see the turnout at this conference, United for Rights, here in the Carrick Dale Hotel this morning. You know, the turnout has been fantastic. Disability groups from across the 32 counties of Ireland are here to both listen to and engage with a number of keynote speakers from Europe, from Britain, from across Ireland about the rights and the protections of those with disability and how they will be adversely affected by Brexit. I think this is a very important conference because it brings lots of people uh, together who don't normally come together. I think the thing, the thing that we're talking about is equality and rights and that's the right approach. It's no longer services and uh, people doing things for disabled people. What I was saying was people who are uh, lived experience of disability say what's right and lead the charge, not follow the charge as they have. This is a really important conference because there are a lot of people here who are either carers or who have disabilities. The key point being made today is that leaving the European Union has human rights implications. It means leaving the fundamental charter of rights, which means a lot of economic and social rights will go. And that's very important because the Charter is a Convention Plus approach and by being in the EU you're automatically in the European Convention on Human Rights. So getting out of the EU also means the repeal of the Human Rights Act and a replacement with the British Bill of Rights might have more scope than you would have had otherwise if you'd stayed in the European Union. The three points we're making today was one, European Union law is really important. Um, because Northern Ireland is the only part of the UK landlocked with another member state, so cross-border issues around childcare and other bread and butter issues are really important. Secondly, getting out of the fundamental charter of human rights has other human rights implications. And thirdly, if people who are disenchanted with politics realise that inequality and participation issues are not resolved simply by getting out of the EU, then there may be disenchantment in other areas like race and migration or other people may get scapegoated and that can include people with disabilities and that's something we need to guard against. My thoughts on today's conference is that it's very interesting. It's very interesting to hear from people with disabilities in Northern Ireland and also in Ireland itself what their main concerns are and actually to hear what the consequences will be when Brexit takes place. So it's very interesting for all of us to come together to learn about the legal aspect but also about the impact that it might have on the daily life of people with disabilities. My fears are that the human rights of people with disabilities in the UK and also in Ireland might be um, impacted with Brexit. We know that a lot of human rights come also from the European Union level, from European Union legislation, such as passengers' rights, uh, protection against discrimination, uh, protection in justice and legal proceedings, or um, also the fact that goods and services need to be accessible in the internal market. So a lot of the human rights of people with disabilities might be discriminated when uh, Brexit takes place. Well, I think it's a great conference, and I want to commend Martina Anderson, MEP, for organizing it and for her team and the, the speakers, uh, I, I think the expertise, the knowledge, the information that was given to us today, but then particularly in the plenary sessions, when people with disabilities or carers for people with disabilities were able to tell us of their experiences. So all in all, I hope it's another step towards equality for everyone. None of the two states are doing everything that can be done for people with disabilities, but at least what rights have been won are generally based on European conventions and other European protocols. They will be lost for people in the North if Brexit goes ahead. And that's very, one of the reasons why we're arguing so strongly for the North to have a special designated status within the European Union so that those rights, those legislative rights, can be maintained. Look, the, the, the conference today, Unite for Equality, was really powerful. It was great to hear, to see here so many people and families with disabilities telling their own um, stories and talking about the hope they have to be able to just ordinarily be part of the community, to be able to use public transport, to be able to get to college, to be able to have a job to just be somebody like anybody else, to be part of the community, to be participants. Uh, I think that was, well, was, for me, the most powerful thing about the conference. Uh, allied to that, 
obviously the whole thinking behind it to pull together the European elements, the whole uh, human rights, and then to bring it right down, as I mentioned already, what is life about for people in ordinary communities, in ordinary places, and to try and make that work for, for people and their, and their families. Today's conference has been a great success, and I want to congratulate Martina Anderson, our MEP, and her team for organising it. It has given us not only an opportunity to pull together the different strands of our activism in the European Parliament, in the Dáil and Shannon, in the Assembly in Belfast, working together, developing a cohesive approach to the whole issues of the needs of our disabled brothers and sisters, friends and neighbours. It's critically important. We've covered a huge amount of ground and work here today and among the most important contributions were those who had themselves a physical or intellectual disability and their testimonies here today have emboldened us even more to the work that lies ahead. Well, whilst the conference is over, the work now begins because we heard from a number of individuals, not just the speakers who travelled from Europe, from Britain and from across Ireland, but also speakers from the floor who have challenges in terms of trying to get the services that they require either for themselves or for their loved one. So across uh, the island, north and south, there are definitely issues that need to be raised and for ourselves as MEP, myself uh, for the North and Matt Carthy who is here as well, we have an opportunity to be able to explain to those people in Europe about the implications of Brexit for the island of Ireland, North and South, but also for the rights and the protections that are needed for those people with a disability. And as co-president of the Disability Intergroup in Europe, I intend to apply apply myself and take this forward and be their force in places where they can't get access to.